Mark Field, CEO of Ford. Thanks for coming over here and making the trek from the convention center. Glad to be here. Very good. Now, before we get started, full disclosure, I need to tell you I own a Chevy truck. Oh, well, I know a dealer I can set you up with. I'm sure you do, but I live in Flint, Michigan, and so owning, owning a Ford there is, is not really allowed, although my father-in-law is very happy I'm talking to you. So, uh, Mark, first question. Have you taken any trips to Mountain View recently? <laughs> I take a lot of trips. You do? I take a lot of trips to Silicon Valley. You know, we, uh, we set up uh, a big research center there a little over a year ago, and, and we've been doing business out there for many, many years. But uh, uh, we talk to a lot of different companies out there. We work a lot of, with a lot of different companies. I know there's lots of speculation out there. Sure. But, you know, clearly we're not gonna we're not gonna comment on the speculation. I mean, between me and you, nobody else is here. <laughs> Do you want to announce anything with Google? You know, we uh, we announced that uh, we're continuing to do advertising with them. We do a lot of advertising. Oh, okay, okay, very good, very good. <laughs> but you do work with a lot of companies in Silicon Valley, and one in particular I find really interesting is Velodyne. Mm -hmm. I have Velodyne speakers in my house, mm -hmm. but you use them for something completely different. Yeah, as part of our that. as part of our strategy, our what we call our Ford Smart Mobility strategy, part of that element is is developing autonomous vehicles, and we have. A, uh, vehicles on the road today that have lots of semi-autonomous features, you know, features that will keep you in your lane, help you automatically park your car, whether sure. it's perpendicular or parallel parking. But we also have a dedicated research team that is uh, working towards getting to what we call a level four hmm. um, autonomous vehicle, which is in a, in a defined area, the driver does not have to be prepared to take control. And as part of our announcements yesterday, we announced that we're tripling our fleet of autonomous vehicle uh, development fleet from about 10 to about 30. And we're working, continuing to work with Velodyne with their third generation uh, LiDAR system, sure. which is much smaller. Uh, you can integrate into the car a lot better so it doesn't look like the car has antlers sure. anymore. And it's, it provides much more precise 3D mapping, which is an important part. Much more precise than what? Can you much be more specific? Well, much more precise than the generation two that we're using right now, okay. which was much more uh, precise than the generation one that we actually started using back in 2005 when we participated in the first DARPA com mm. uh, competitions, autonomous vehicle competitions. Sure, sure. So you've been working on this for about 10 years now. Yes. You triple the size. A lot of the testing, from what I understand, is done on private facilities. When are you going to venture out onto the real roads like Google does? Yeah. Well, we just uh, we're doing obviously, as you said, a lot of testing on our, our test uh, test grounds in Michigan and in Arizona. We're testing at uh, University of Michigan at their simulated urban area called M City, mm -hmm. and we just got the license to go on public roads in California. And we'll be starting that this year. Oh, fantastic! So, what is the short-term goal? Let's say for 2016. Where do you want to see your company's auto autonomous program by the end of the year? Well, clearly we have certain, cert we want to uh, collect obviously a certain amount of mileage, right, on the autonomous vehicles that we have because what we're really doing in, uh, with that mileage is not only being able to, to further hone the mapping, the 3D mapping, but further hone the algorithms. Sure. and also further work on the sensor technology, the camera technology, et cetera, and being able to integrate that all in the vehicle that has the appropriate amount of processing power. So where we want to be a year from now is obviously a lot more progress in terms of mileage that we've racked up okay. and a lot more specificity and improvements around algorithms and sensors. And that mileage is more going to be on private or, or public roads? It's going to be a combination of both because obviously we're going to be starting on California public mm -hmm. roads, uh, we're going to be starting on Michigan public roads, and that will complement all Wait, the I mileage. I live in Michigan, though. Oh, well, well, we'll do it in Flint, and maybe you'll <laughs> meet up with your Chevy. There's plenty of room in Flint. <laughs> you can do it anywhere you want up there. Uh, well, let's, let's switch gears for a bit. Um, I'm going to read a quote. Bill Ford gave a fantastic interview in Wired, and, and he, he was quoted by saying, unless we figure out a very different urban transportation model, it's not going to work. If you think we're going to shove two cars in every garage in Mumbai, you're crazy. What is he talking about? Well, what Bill's talking about is this issue of global gridlock, which if you look at societal factors, if you look at the growth of major urban areas, we call them megacities, cities with 10 million or more people, 
Uh, today, there's about 28. By 15 years from now, mm -hmm. there'll be over 40. And when you combine that with the growth of the global middle class, which will double over the next 15 years, and of course, the first thing somebody does when they get to the middle class is they buy a car because it connotes oh, yeah. that they've made it. And you got to buy a better car. Exactly. Yeah. And, or go from a scooter to a car. Oh, sure. And what that does is it, it increases congestion even more. So we're looking at that and we're saying, listen, that, the infrastructure can't take that. So how do we, as an as a auto company, think of ourselves as an auto company and a mobility company? So for people that don't, can't own cars, how do we provide access versus ownership? Mm -hmm. So what are some of the solutions you're working towards? Well, we're working on a variety of different solutions. We were here last year at CES. We launched Ford Smart Mobility, which is our plan to take ourselves to the next level in connectivity, autonomous vehicles, mobility, the customer experience, mm -hmm. and data and analytics. And we launched over 25 experiments. Okay. And we've now honed that down to two areas that we're focusing on. Uh, flexible use and ownership, and then what we call multimodal urban mobility solutions, which is essentially that's a, that's how, do you, how, do you get a, how do you get around a city? You have an acronym for that yet? Yeah, it's, it, even I can't pronounce it. <laughs> but it, it's, it's all about how do you integrate different modes of transportation to get around sure. a big city. And in the flexible use and ownership, we have a couple of pilots, one in London, which is uh, a, uh, a ride sharing or a car sharing service where you can take one-way trips, just pay as you go, guaranteed parking sure. in London, and that's a, that's a big uh, deal. Just there, I understand. And uh, so we're learning a lot from that. We're probably going to expand that. We've done what we call peer-to-peer -peer sharing here in the U.S. and in, in the U.K. as well, where those customers that have financed through Ford Credit, one of our vehicles, they can actually lend their cars out to others hmm. And the money that they earn from that can be deducted from their monthly payment. So what you're saying, it, a lot of these use cases sound like startups that are doing these. Blah Blah Car is a mm -hmm. Paris-based startup, and they do the, the one-way transport. Correct. Relay ra Rides is another one where you can loan out your car, rent it out. Mm -hmm. when, when you look at this, you're looking at all these ride-sharing things. What, where does Uber come into play? Well, I think Uber comes into play in terms of, uh, you know, providing a mobility service, a, a transportation as a service as well. And, you know, it, for some people it works. For some people they prefer others. Let's say they're, they're, they're schlepping things with them and they need to be able to put it into a trunk or things sure. of that nature. Or they need the utility of a vehicle, whether it's a car or an SUV, for a period of time. Right. So when you, when you look at this, it, it's, it's funny because you – Ford has been around forever. You're a legacy company. And then there's somebody like Uber with the ride-sharing thing, and they're worth more than you guys are. Yeah, well, I can't, I, I, I'm done trying to explain Wall Street, but <laughs> what we're trying to do in our business is we, we have a great heritage, which for, which for me, heritage is history with a mm -hmm. future. And we're thinking of our business in, in, in this way. One is we have our core business of designing, developing, and manufacturing great cars, utilities, and trucks. And we're going to love that business and nurture it and continue to invest. And then you have these, these, this emerging uh, mobility services markets. Sure. And we're saying to ourselves, as a mobility company, how can we provide solutions to customers that will allow us to grow in ways we've never thought before, but that also complement the core business? And that's why we're doing these experiments. And as a 100-year-old-plus company, being able to innovate and, and challenge our organization to uh, experiment and mm -hmm. learn and see how we can grow in new areas is very invigorating. So, Mark, in 10, 20 years from now, is Ford going to look like the Ford of today on the, sold on the back of trucks? Or is it going to look more like Uber? Well, I think Ford, we will continue to be known for, a, even 20 years out, we'll be continue to be known as, as first and foremost, a company that makes great autos, great okay. cars, utilities, and trucks. But also, at the same time, a great mobility company that will help people get around. So I think you'll see us change to a certain degree sure. and in a very uh, a fresh and modern way. Yeah, that, that's neat. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, startups in Detroit. You guys recently partnered with Techstars. Correct. Techstars launched in Detroit last year, and they just finished their first class, Techstars Mobility. What is Ford hoping to gain out of that? Well, first off, we're, we're hoping to gain access to, to some really great new companies and new ideas. I mean, let's face it, when you're a big company, getting access to a big company, if mm -hmm. you're a startup, is really, really difficult. So by doing things like sponsoring tech stars, 
doing things like opening, a, like we did a year ago, our research and innovation center in Palo Alto, where on a daily basis we have startups coming to see us. We're working with incubators. We're working with technology accelerators. We're really opening up many doors for a lot of different types of companies to have sure. access to us that uh, otherwise they would not have. Ford's really not known as a company that buys startups, though. I mean, you guys do, sure, and you're going to throw some numbers out at me, but that's not what you're known for. So what, should a, what type of startup are you looking for? Well, it's not just about what startups would we buy, but what startups do we want to do business with? What, what okay. startups do we want to partner with? Uh, you know, an example of buying a startup, we, we bought a company called Livio. I know uh, Livio, I know, you know Jake. A number of years ago. And Jake's and, uh, new company's right inside that door. <laughs> and it's worked out really well. Uh -huh. It has helped us to develop a smart, you know, smart device link and, and uh, our, 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 our app link. Mm -hmm. But it's not just about, you know, who are we going to buy, but, you know, where ideas come from and who can we partner with? That, that, that's really how we're thinking about it. So what this. type of companies are you looking to partner with? What type of technologies are this, they developing? It really falls into the areas of connectivity, around autonomous vehicles, around the customer experience and how technology is, is enhancing the, mm -hmm. the customer experience or making people's lives better or easier, and also in the area of data and analytics. Oh, great. Well, so one last question, and we kind of touched on this earlier, but you sure you don't have anything to talk about Google? <laughs> Google's, a, Google's a great partner. We do a lot of advertising with them. We, sure. we, just, inter, we just incorporated Android Auto yeah, uh, yeah. into our vehicles. So a uh, very good company, like well, many fantastic. companies out in Silicon Valley. But thanks for the question. Yeah, of course. A very good polished <laughs> answer. Mark, thank you so much for your time. All and right, thanks you're so much. sticking around to be a judge for Hardware oh, Battlefield. Yeah. It's going to be fun. So what are we going to do?